Good morning, everyone. This is Barry Knapp with Ironsides Macroeconomics. It's Monday morning, April 29th, about 7 a.m. Mountain Time. Our note this week was titled No Stag, Just Inflation. And we continue to believe that investors are <clears throat> struggling to adjust to a very different regime than we've been in, arguably for the last four decades. This is a reflationary or higher inflationary regime as opposed to the four decades of disinflation that dominated my four years, uh, four years, excuse me, four decades uh, in the business. Um, the, the chart that I have behind me, for those of you viewing this on video, is a chart of the nominal treasury curve, and it's intended to show you that the bulk of the selling in treasuries since the March CPI report has been in the belly of the curve. And of course, last week we had 183 billion of new belly securities issued by the treasury twos, fives and sevens. And so um, we continue to struggle to absorb that. And the major theme around why we're struggling to absorb that is we're running higher rates of inflation with robust growth, growth running above uh, anybody's estimate of potential growth, even with the surge in immigration, which is uh, helping on the labor side a little bit and the um, normalization of supply chains, we're still running aggregate demand above the level that the economy can easily absorb and the supply side can adjust to. And a lot of that is attributable to running 7% budget deficits, uh, government spending around 24% of GDP with unemployment near or below anybody's estimates of full employment. So. We did get the rally that we expected last week. <clears throat> um, tech earnings was the uh, uh, the cause of the rally, although the beginning of the rally early last week was led by small caps, banks, um, defensive sectors like staples, utilities, and REITs. That makes no sense to us. That is sustainable in our view only until and unless the Fed embarks on an aggressive rate cut uh, regime, a level that would take the policy rate down to 4% and painlessly disinvert the curve. And uh, that's going to be impossible without a real weakening in the labor market. That, of course, is the theme of this week <clears throat> and why last week we talked about the point when the chaos would hit the fan. So we got the relief rally based on earnings, which do look strong. Again, remember, re aggregate uh, demand is robust. Um, but when we get corrections in an inflationary regime, they're most likely going to come because of a shock higher in real interest rates. And, uh, and that's what we're at risk for this week. Of course, the big events that are likely to influence that would be the Treasury's quarterly refunding announcement on Wednesday before we ex actually get to the FOMC press conference. And there, we don't think they have the flexibility that they had back in late October, early November to increase bill issuance. That decision to increase bill issuance is forcing the Fed to slow QT, something that they didn't want to do. That is what we'll likely hear from the, uh, the Fed this week, is that they're going to slow. Uh, they essentially pre-announced that in the FOMC minutes, that they're going to slow the runoff cap on treasuries from 60 billion a month to 30 billion a month they may forward start that taper it so to speak but nonetheless some investors may view that favorably we would not because there as we've discussed on uh many occasions there's three channels that qe and qt work through the first one is liquidity bank reserves the feds rrp program that gets most of the attention but um, the real, the more important channels are duration and interest rate volatility. There, the Fed is likely to leave the mortgage cap unchanged. Now that they're not putting very much duration into the market right now, but um, the only thing that could happen this week that would stabilize the back end of the market would be if Treasury decided to issue fewer coupons. They can't do that by issuing more bills, we don't believe, because of the effects that it would have on liquidity. Um, they could just decide to run down the Treasury General account, uh, something that we heard a lot of from uh, clients last week. There are plenty of skeptics out there, and rightly so, given the aggressive management the Treasury's had around that over the last couple of years. So those are really the big 
items to watch from a policy perspective, from a macro perspective, it's going to be all about uh, jolts and ADP on Wednesday. And then, of course, payrolls on Friday. We'll get out a note on Wednesday uh, offering a preview once we've seen that incoming data and have some perspective. But thus far, there's no reason to believe that this trend of strong payroll gains being driven by foreign born workers with uh, uh, very rapid rates of immigration are likely to change anytime soon. We do think small business is weak beneath the surface. We got the business employment dynamics report that showed births and deaths from existing institutions back in the third quarter of 23. And there was quite a few less jobs created than the BLS originally estimated. So we do think small business is struggling underneath the surface. That ultimately will be the reason that the Fed has to cut rates, that along with pressure on the banking system. But that's a story for another day. Also in the note this week was a detailed discussion of, of, of that GDP report, of the CapEx outlook, which is very robust. We do think we're going to have a CapEx boom. And of course, quite a bit more details. We'd love you to consider becoming a full subscriber to our notes. Uh, this week's note was some 3,100 words and uh, 12 or so charts and tables, uh, complete with details, our specific recommendations on what sectors you should be in and how you should be thinking about asset allocation. Barry Knapp, Ironsides Macro. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you.